Every time I play around with different command and control frameworks, I always come back to Sliver. Because Sliver implants are written in Go, the final payload is quite large. A workaround for this is to set up a staged Sliver payload that has the joyful issue of compiling, no problem, just to return no shell. This video will cover how to resolve the compile but no shell issue when using Sliver stagers. Before starting the demos, I'd like to show that Windows Defender is turned off initially. It will be re-enabled later in the video. To get started, I'm going to start the Sliver server. This was installed with apt. If it's installed differently, you will launch it a different way, but the rest of the video should be the same. When using Sliver stagers, it's comprised of four steps. Step one is to start our initial payload listener. The second step is to start our profile, which will be associated with our listener that allows us to put multiple different stage listeners under it using the same port as our listener. The settings you can use here will, might be a little bit different, but this is what I'm going to use for now. All right. So again, we have our job and if we type profiles with no arguments, we can see all of our profiles. The third step is to create the stage listener. So I'll create an HTTP and a TCP stage listener, which will be on two different ports. Our host will put the HTTP on 9443, and our profile will be M um, shellcode, which matches the profile name. And then I'll create one with, instead of HTTP, we'll put TCP. And I'll just put it on one, two, three, four. Now when we look at our jobs, we can see we have our second stage of our payload type and our two stage listeners. Since Sliver supports Metasploit's protocols, we can create our stages with MSF Venom. So Windows X64, custom, reverse, for the HTTP, we would use this one, and then for the TCP, we would use this one. So when HTTP, our L host would be if zero, L port would be that. And then the only difference between the TCP and the HTTP is for the HTTP, we would do L U R I, and then our path to whatever string dot off format exe and then out our output file so http.exe and then for the tcp one it's literally almost the same except we remove the luri part custom verse tcp l host eve zero or whatever your interface is one, two, three, four, format exe o tcp.exe. Instead of having to remember the Metasploit command with MSF Venom, the stager can be created within Sliver with the generate stager command. However, the issue with this is if your shellcode runner that you're using to execute the stager that's generated within Sliver, so you don't have to remember all the options. It might not execute properly and you won't get a shell. So for this example, we'll just do the stager on the HTTP and then use a tool that's incompatible to show it failing. Sometimes what fails is your, it could be the stager, it could just be the listener. In this case, it's just the stager being incompatible where it compiles, but it doesn't execute. So we take a raw shellcode, throw it into Rattoon, and we have our shellcode formatted into the shellcode runner. Now let's listen on 80 so we can move the files over. In here we have a simple bat file type I'm not in PowerShell 
And all it does is just pass an argument over to curl so we can just easily download the file. So download and then http.exe, tcp.exe, and raptoon.exe. If I try to run Rattoon, which is generated through Sliver, if you look at the shellcode, you'll see that it is technically a Metasploit shellcode. However, I'm just taking the raw shellcode and reformatting it into a custom shellcode runner. But when you try to run it, it hangs. And when we go back to our terminal, we don't get any shell. So let's control C out of that. But when I run the HTTP one, it executes and we get a session. And if I run the TCP one, we get another session. Zoom in real quick, and then we can do a session. I mean, not session. We can do use, and then I can do like, who am I to prove that our session works. Background the session, look at our jobs again, and look at our profiles, just to show that we have one profile across multiple stages. All right and that trying to use our custom stager failed. All right, moving on to the second demo, which is if you go to the C2 documentation and in the documentation for the stagers, it talks about having a custom uh, C-sharp stager. The issue with the stager is that it cross compiles, but it doesn't execute. The same issue with using the custom Rattoon it will compile, but it won't execute properly. So what I mean by that is if I go into docs, we have our stager. So just the default one. If I try to do mono CSC to cross compile it, stager, we have our stager.exe listed right here. 80. and grab that file, stager.exe. But if I try to run the stager.exe, it attempts to run, but we don't get any shell. If I go back to our server server and type sessions, we can see that we only have the two sessions with us before, and there's no other session. Some of the stagers you might find or try out might only be natively compiled on Windows itself. So if we open up Visual Studio, we have the same thing in here. And I'll just do rebuild solution. It will compile, grab this file path, go back into here. And now if I run the stage that it was built in Visual Studio. Exception, invalid one. All right, let's just re-grab this from the blog. Well, not the blog, the docs. Put in our L host or L port. Rebuild solution. Okay, run this again. And we can see that from that, we get a new session, a check done. However, there's an issue with this, which comes down to Windows Defender. So if I cancel this, which will kill our session, and I go into PowerShell, if I do a threat check to check for malicious strings and run it against our stager, I didn't copy, of course. Okay, thanks for lying to me. Let's turn this back on. Threat has been found. Yeah, it's gonna find all the threats that I just uploaded the box. All right, so Windows Defender is re-enabled. If I try to run this exe again, it fails because there is a virus. And I don't know why threat check isn't showing that. Well, that kind of sucks. The workaround for this is pretty simple because the stager is very benign. There's no like Mosher shellcode or anything sus about it. All it really does is request the rest. All I really have to do is 
fix.cs, paste our payload into here, retype. That looks good. So all we really need to do is remove the bad strings. It would have alerted on them when I ran threat check, but for some reason it didn't work. So all I'm really doing is saying, hey, the sliver stager, the stager, that one executes strings. All these strings will be replaced with less malicious strings. So remove, move, fix. Now when we cat, oh, just less fix, we can see all of the bad strings are removed. Cat fix to our clipboard so we can move it over. Go back into Visual Studio, paste in our updated code, rebuild solution. And even the Defender is enabled. We'll just put this over to the side. Defender is enabled. If I try to do like echo invoke Mimi cats, echo invoke Mimi cats, we can see that Defender is still active. But if I try to run this, it still works and we get a shell because I just swapped out the strings. Nope. Sessions. And we can see we only have one session because Windows Defender killed all the other sessions, but not the one that was modified by finding and replacing the string. The third demo will be using Silver Stagers that give you a beacon instead of a session. If we look at our Windows machine, I turned off Windows Defender and killed our session. Zooming back into Silver, we'll create a new payload listener for HTTP. And then when we do our profile, we will add the beacon in front and that will allow us to make it a beacon. So every time the stager is executed, what shell we get will become a beacon. HTTP. And then I'll just reuse the Visual Studio stager by just changing the port. So 9001. Shellcode. And then we'll just do HTTP. Uh, win. We type profiles. There is our implant type of a beacon instead of a session with this profile name. Now to do the third step, which is of course stage listener with our HTTP win and then URL. This a little bit in a different order, which is okay. And I'll put it on port 4400. Once that's done compiling, and we have our job that's linked to our HTTP listener. Going back into Visual Studio, we'll just change our payload to 4400 for the port. Rebuild solution. All right, that has completed. Go back to here, run this again. And now when we go back to Sliver, we can see a beacon is checked in instead of scrolling back up and seeing that a session is checked in. Now all we need to do is uh, sessions should be empty and to show our beacons, we just type beacons. One of them has died, unfortunately, when I was testing, but we have our new beacon down here. So I can use our beacon, run the who am I command, and it works. To double prove that it is a beacon, the default beacon waits for commands every 60 seconds. So if we do, I have a bunch of the armory loaded into here, and we could just do an armory command. So sharp up, for example, x64 audit. We can type tasks to see what it's being run and when. We can do beacon watch. And then our beacon
Okay. Don't really have to do that. But as you can see, it took a little bit of time, but it ran sharp up. And that's about it. And that concludes this video. If you have any questions, concerns, leave them in the comments. I'll see you all in the weird, uncertain future of life. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.